What is Gucci Manucci's Darwin TV here and on this episode of the Half Court Podcast, we are going to be discussing something very, very important, some insight, business tips. I have my guy with me, my co-host, Juan, the one and only Juan, man. He is a young entrepreneur, young businessman, and he's just going to give us a little bit of tips. Juan, welcome to the show, man. Hello, hello. All right, man. So we are psyched to have you here to get you some inside business um some good tips so i'm gonna start off right off the bat man i'm gonna tell you and ask you where and how did you get to where you are right now because right now you have a cbd shop you have a dispensary which is pretty popular and you also are planning to open a second dispensary if i'm am i yeah, correct? yeah we're opening a dispensary a grow and a processing center that will eventually be a lab and a waste disposal place so we're going to do all five stages of the marijuana. Okay, okay, I see location, you. So. I see you, man. And the funny story behind this, man, this guy used to work with me. We used to be co-workers at mm -hmm. T-Mobile. So uh, right off the bat, when I met this guy, I already knew he was different. He was all about his business and becoming a businessman. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of tips from him to get my credit score up, all this good jazz. So where did you start, man, and what got you into, like, starting this business, man? Man, so like i've always wanted nice things and the only way to get nice things is by working for it or stealing right <laughs> yeah yeah that's true uh, and you know i mean i'd rather go the honest way about it and you know work hard for what i have and i've just never been complacent you know with uh i don't know things like i've always wanted more right i've right. always wanted more and more and more and more so i've always chewed more than you know i could eat and i've managed to do it so it's that thing of just overcoming your comfort zone yeah, uh, a lot right. of people get comfortable and you know like that's it they never leave that comfort zone especially with jobs man i think a lot with of people jobs, yes yeah. i i always dislike working for other people like you know i worked with t-mobile probably like five years or so and it was it was a good job it taught me a lot but it was just that thing that i'm always going to work under somebody somebody's always going to tell me what to do they're going to dictate when i go to work how i have to work etc and you know like you know some people do need that guidance you know to kind of put them in the right spot of hey this is what you got to do this is what you need to do and some other people are self you know self-driven and they know what they have to do and you don't have to tell them something and i mean i, I like to think i'm self-driven individual that's good man that's good i like that like i said from the get-go i already knew you was up to something and you finally made it happen, I man. You got your own happen. dispensary, uh, 405 Buds. Four so five. If you, you know what I'm saying? He got the merch on deck. Got so I've been to that place. I've done business with the guy. And I, I got to say, man, I like the location. I like the vibe that I get out of it. And I think the company in general is just going to grow. You know, there's a lot of dispensaries out there. But I think what's going to set you apart is the vibe that you get, the customer service, and just the brand in general, man. You stay active on social media. I see you all the time. Um, doing it for the patients. Yes, yes, you're also doing it for the patients too. So um, it's a lot of value that you bring into your customers, you know. So that's good, man. But as far as like just starting up a business, like what are the complications of it? What is the headaches that complications? Comes? Everybody thinks you need money to have a business, and, or that you need this huge capital, or that you know you need the next greatest thing. Like no, there's so many things out there, like. The way I explain it is you're the business because you're the business, you know, if you really think about it, it's you The you're the driving force behind the business. So the business can either be a brick and mortar or it can be something that can be done anywhere. So you're essentially you're the business, you know, the business can't succeed or the business can't exist without you being the driving force behind it. So it's always you that has to start with the initiative. You know, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's say you want to own a car detail shop. I mean, you're not going to start off with a building and a detail shop off the bat. So what you end up doing is, hey, post on Facebook. Hey, guys, uh, I'm cleaning cars and 10 bucks. I'll come to you. That's, that's, right. that's a convenience. You know, you're adding something that other places can't do. You're going to them instead of them having to go 
take their car to get washed. Yes, so that's right. I like that. Eventually, you know, if you start doing that, you get your practice in, you get a clientele, and then you can finally get your brick and mortar. So you don't have to start huge. Um, I always thought that, man. I always thought that I had I had at least fifty thousand in the bank, or no. I don't know, or maybe go to the uh, bank and be like, "Yo, let me a loan of at least fifty thousand to see what I can do with it." You know what I'm saying? And why would you want to get yourself in debt without even having? Well, that's the thing. I wish business, they would teach you know? us that. I think they. I wish they would teach us that more in like school. In school, yeah. You know, instead I, of like I, I, yeah. history, they, they, or they don't teach you how to do your taxes. They don't teach you how to how to do exactly. your credit. They don't exactly. teach you exactly. They don't teach us none of that, Nothing. and that's a big yeah. thing. Like. The I would say 80% of what they teach in school is just a waste of time because it's like you mentioned, they don't teach none of that. They don't teach how to start your own business, how to do your taxes, how to keep your credit score on check. What is this credit score? Because like, what is it? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they don't know. Nobody knows. Yes, uh, nowhere yes. in the books that you read, did, did you ever read about a credit score? Nope. 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 I had to learn the hard way by fucking it up, you know? Yeah. I mean, and, and even then, they're all trying to feed you student loans, student loans, student right, loans, right. student loans, student loan. And then at the end, even if you do come out with a degree, what, you're, what, in debt. What, you're in debt. And then sometimes you can't even get a job right. doing what you're doing. So I mean, how many people did you see at T-Mobile? with the degree or college education very few very few and and, and, and then the ones that did and the one it, the they, ones that did actually were not making the money they're supposed to you know and they're like oh i went to uh one of our good friends of ours i don't know he's a good friend of mine still uh brian good old brian uh he had a college degree he had a couple of them and he was working at t-mobile but at the end of the day, he still wasn't going to be making that much money yeah, if he found so, the job he wanted to go for. I mean, you know? school wasn't for me, and I learned that after high school. You know, high school, I thought it was kind of a waste of time, but you have to do it or your parents get arrested or, you know, you right, go right. to jail or whatever. But after that, I tried college, uh, hopped right in after school ended. Like, I literally started that summer break, and I maybe did two, three semesters, and after seeing the cost of school because i didn't get any scholarships not because i was stupid just because i'm on daca so right i can't qualify for shit so i have to pay even out of state tuition when everybody else is getting these scholarships going to jail wasting these all these big opportunities that i wish i would have had so like i feel like i've always been set back or actually i don't know been limited to the things i could do but I mean, I could still show you could still come on top even right, right. if you that's, feel like that. That And that's something I even forgot, man. Like, that's a perfect example, man. You didn't let anything hold you back because you all, you know, you have the DACA uh, Dream Act. And that's something that, you know, Trump has been trying to get away from, like trying to take away from the hardworking, you know, yeah. people. And it's like, it doesn't make sense, man. To me, it does not. But like you I are. I create jobs. Like, yeah. And it's like you're over here. here, you know, you got your own business. You you have multiple ones and you're planning on, on opening even more. And so, that helps the economy. Me, that's you pay jobs. your taxes you that's, know what i'm saying yeah, like that's more jobs like, it's it's crazy man so i really look up to that man and um you I know mean, like i said people just limit themselves like right I, I got here i didn't know any english at all you know uh i didn't have a car you know like i was limited where i could work and we were still making stuff happen so all these people are like man there's no jobs out here uh, there's no opportunities. I'm stuck in the same situation. Or the famous like, the the famous uh, phrase that they say is like, "Oh, these people, you know, these Hispanics and this are they're taking our jobs." No, we want the job more than you. That's why we get hired. Like, just don't 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 get that twisted. You know what I'm saying? So, because there's plenty of jobs out there for everybody. For everybody. You know, you just can't but... be like, "Oh, they're taking our jobs." No, they're not. They're working harder than you to get that job. So I don't think that should be an excuse, man. There's no excuses, There's period. No excuses. I mean, if you literally, if you see somebody that's on the street, I mean, there are certain situations where like, hey, you know, they, certain things happen to get you there. But one of them is, you know, you either have no drive, you know, I, I, yeah, no, I, I no, you don't have the will to, to work. like. And they look, they look completely fine. Yeah. I mean, I, they have their two legs, two feet. Two, two hands, feet, arms, yeah. and a everything. social and ID, and it, right? And if they are there all day trying to get some money out of us, why don't you just go and get money for yourself instead of just trying to leech off for other people? You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's fine to give somebody a hand up, but like to kind of feed into you know the laziness. I think it's uh, excuses are just a perfect. It's just a perfect 
example for them, I guess, to like fall yeah. back. You know it's, what I'm saying? This is another thing. Like people just get comfortable. Like people just gonna like. Let's say you go get a job at McDonald's. You're 40 years old, and you plan on being there the rest of your life. Why? Because you were comfortable. Yes. You're, you're comfortable going there now every single day, earning that seven dollars and twenty. And you already cents. know what to do too. So like some people, yeah. Get, and then yeah. no matter how hard you work. At the end of the two weeks, you're still going to get your $600 check. Mm-hmm. You, next week, you could work harder, even harder. You're and guess gonna what's going to happen? Yeah. You're still going to get paid the same. Yep, yep, so this yep. is why I've always liked jobs that pay commission because you decide how much you get paid. I've always liked doing my own thing because if I work hard, you know the results are going to... And that's the Obviously. perk. That's the perk of also working commission because I've always worked commission as well. But let's say you miss out on a day. You call in or whatever. You can go the next day. And you can get that day that you, you lost can make back up. in commission. So and you can make keep up that in mind. It. Yeah. So like these hourly jobs that are out there, like if you really want something and want to improve your life, like for real, try a commission job at least once. And that will tell you how much work ethic you have. Yes. Because your paycheck depends on you, not necessary right. yeah and then for those who think oh i can't sell i can't sell like look man nobody is nobody's perfect yeah nobody comes yeah. with like oh I'm, I'm the perfect sales guy or I, I was born with sales skills like you just learn it period like it's all about pitching it's all about mind games it really just trying to make it make it appealing for your customer that's all it is man there's a lot of courses there's youtube Product out there itself it's just you know hey so and so this and this this is the benefit boom that's right. That's right. So going into that, bro, like having those businesses that you have right now, what would you say would be the importance of having like a solid business partner? A solid business partner? So I've tried the business partner thing a few times and it's kind of fallen through. Um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's just my luck, but I wouldn't necessarily say look for having a solid business partner. You just have to find somebody with the same vision as you. Because you can find a business partner. Finding a business partner, you know, that's not the hardest thing to do because everybody's out there ready to throw all this money at the next big thing. So I right. have, I've had a lot of people like, hey, I want to start a business with you. What I got to do to invest? What do I have to do? This and that. And I'm like, man, honestly, I don't want a business partner just because of the hassle and the problems. Trust. Uh, if and it, all trust, that, yeah. if it doesn't go your way, now you got problems but i mean it's just finding somebody that that's gonna have that same vision not necessarily finding somebody that's got the money not necessarily finding somebody that has got the funds it's just finding somebody with the same drive as you somebody's got the same vision for the same company because if you guys are both pulling the same way then the only thing that's gonna happen to that company is gonna grow now if you got a partner that, you know, you're spending more time arguing about, oh, I do this and you don't well, this do this. Idea is better than and then this. I do this better than you or I have to get this or I get more of this and that. You know, that's not going to go anywhere. If you're arguing over simple stuff already from the get go, how do you think that's going to end up? That's so right. it's just it's finding somebody that's going to have that same passion and, and drive. Like, let's say you want to do movies. Right. And you need help or something. You're not going to go. I don't know, ask Santa Claus at the mall for, right, for right, help. Right, right. Yeah, you know, like mm-hmm. you're going to go find somebody that's in the same profession as you and that's maybe looking to grow and you're like, hey, I got this idea. Like, I want to be the, the next big that's thing right, here in right. Oklahoma, but I need some hands. You know, I don't have the capital to do it. I got the equipment and you got this equipment and we can put it together and then yeah i think it's that's very important just to have the same vision that can that that will uh always outpower somebody that oh i want to do a business with you but have all the money but if they don't have the same vision i think that doesn't mean they don't know what they're doing like at the end of the day it's just dead weight i mean all right cool they gave you all this money but what what else other than giving you money can they do right and then they'll probably end up trying to change shit change your vision like you know i'm putting this money here but i think this would be better to even make more money but it's like this is not the vision I had. You know what I'm saying? This is kind of. Yeah. So when it comes to business partner, you know, if, 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 
if you could do it by yourself, always do it by yourself. Never, never involve a second, third party. Don't involve a friend. Don't involve family. Because that shit's always going to go south. south. Or it can go south. And you don't want to break relationships with right. friends or family over. I think that's, that's very Over important. money, pretty much. That's Yeah, that's, that's yeah. very important. I think uh, when it comes to like business partners and stuff, like for example, the, the my filmmaking stuff, when I do the weddings and all that good jazz, I, I don't care about the money. I says we we will divide anything fairly. I don't care about the money. I'm trying to be as clear and make sure we're both on the same page because I always think lo- loyalty and you know work ethic is something that goes along with me. It's like very important. Yeah. So and as long as end, yeah, qualities you know the quality comes out pretty good. So it's like yeah, on that hundred percent, man, a hundred percent on the you know the business part, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, so like on the you know on the relationship side because you know you are pretty much engaged um how involved is your my fiance yes uh she was very involved actually so uh, i mean she came from not knowing literally anything mm-hmm. about marijuana to now she's doing purchases uh she looks at the product before it hits the shelves i mean literally every aspect from so she's a big part of it like she's, she's a big, big part, part of, of it yeah like uh, if if she wasn't around like four it would be more four work. five buds wouldn't be what it is yeah because you know? it'll be more work for you well, yeah like, i mean uh she definitely takes a weight off my shoulder so that's that's what i mean by finding somebody that has the right vision Instead of somebody that's gonna try to hold you back, and I'm pretty sure she enjoys that way more than her no, previous yeah, she, job. You know we, what I'm en- saying? we enjoy it, like you know. That's there's nice, there's man. nothing better than being your own boss. He's good. He's good. Oh, just lower it a little bit. You good? Yeah, you good. Technical difficulties. You're trying to make sure we get a clean mm. shot of the of the guy. You know what I'm saying? Of homeboy over here, but uh, go ahead, bro. Sorry for interrupting. But yeah, um, she's she's definitely you know like. You know, uh, on it, a on big it. pillar for the business. You know, um, I do a lot. She does a lot, but definitely there's stuff that she does that I couldn't do. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, business partner and you know your partner. I mean, definitely if if you can find something that your partner can help you in, then you know that only helps you guys grow even closer together because that's now you have your relationship you have your business relationship and that's something it, it ties you guys and it, like it ties makes you, up, you guys you better spend more you know time with right. them so instead of you know you having your own job and then she has her own job and you only get to see each other when you're home and then when you're home you're tired and all you want to do is go to sleep right 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 so perfect. that is a perfect example and it's like it's something that betters you guys as far as like even being better in relationship you communicate you guys got to be on it all the time and it's perfect because also you got to make sure you guys are in good terms because like you you got a business to run you You know what i'm saying as a team yeah yeah you got to work yeah so it definitely it helps and i mean i i I couldn't be here if it wasn't for her for sure gotcha gotcha so here's one thing that i've been curious about and how does taxes like how does that work filling your own taxes because i know you got to keep track of all of it now at the end of the day when it's time to fill out the taxes is it a pain in the ass uh so we keep a, a software that pretty much is keeping track of all the taxes that we take um so we have to take seven percent for the marijuana tax and then like seven and some change for the oklahoma and state or local taxes so it comes to about 15 percent uh taxes on your purchase so keep it simple if you spend 100 bucks you just pay like sixteen dollars in taxes, which is outrageous, uh, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean it's the taxes. Uh, I mean, uh, literally. So we pay two taxes. We pay the local tax, and then we pay the marijuana tax every month. And I think last month, just in sales tax, we pay like twenty five grand. Holy shit! Just A month. In taxes, yeah, for that month. Damn. Just See, taxes. Golly, that's a lot. This is like jesus thank god is 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 profiting because like that's a lot just in taxes this is just some that's a monthly thing that's just a month a monthly that's thing. not so the every, end uh, yeah no it wasn't for the year it was for that month just in taxes yeah at the end of the year at the end of the year when you like oh fuck i mean we're gonna do you end well, up paying yeah because we, we still have to pay the government taxes on top of that and right now since it's still federally illegal uh you can't really write off all the shit that you're buying so golly that's right. That's right. Wow, I didn't even know that. You yeah, know, that's a 
quite the so all the stuff that you could regularly write off for a business like your rent your employees etc etc can't write it off with a marijuana business because it's still because it's still federally legal yeah i mean there's a special tax code like it's called 280e but you have to hire somebody that knows their shit wow that is quite the thing man wow well uh good to know hopefully that becomes legal pretty soon so that way you know y'all can stop getting fucked in the ass you know um another thing is like you know you're already how long have you had this uh the four or five buds we've opened three months ago three actually, months about three months ago. wow we've only been open three months it feels like it's it's been longer man it's because like know. you got so much control of it like you you know like what what you're doing and like how to run it so smoothly um how many employees do you have right now right now i have nine employees nine employees nine employees look at you man thousand square feet you know it's not the biggest location but right right it's pretty popular yeah um so when it comes to like doing payroll and all that is that also a pain in the ass uh so we keep an app that we use so yeah so just like any regular job you know clock in clock out and then every two weeks you get paid you know okay uh we keep the software definitely helps a lot uh helps helps take out all that extra time you know having to sit there and and then uh by hand for also you when you take uh payments and all that purchases and cards, that's also a percentage you have to pay, correct? Um, so we can't take debit card transactions, but we do have an ATM. Where they can, okay. So the ATM does charge them three bucks, but that doesn't go to, to me. That goes to the ATM company. ATM, yeah. yeah. Do you get something out of the ATM? I don't. You don't? Yeah, so it's just there. I mean, it's just a convenience. For know? the customer? Yeah. Okay. Somebody could go say, I'm going to go to the ATM and just never come back. So. Right, right, right. That's true. That's true. That's that's good, man. I like that thinking. I didn't even think about it. I was like, that's right. They might be like, you know what? I'll I'll go another day. So that's business there that you're losing. Um, so it's no debit, no credit. Yeah, just cash. Just cash at the moment. I mean, okay. you could do debit and credit, but it has to be an ATM withdrawal. So if you have a credit card, uh, set up a pin number. You can't take money out of ATMs. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. I didn't so even. So yeah, know. you could take cash advances out of your credit cards, uh, but they charge you like twenty one percent on that money that you take compared to your regular Just credit regular, card yeah, rate. Yeah, yeah, Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so I wouldn't advise doing a credit card ATM withdrawal, just in my opinion, just because you're going to be paying so much more at the end. Yeah, okay. That's good advice right there, man. And going to the, you know, employees, you also had a little small incident of one of your long yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a long, uh, we had a little incident. So, uh, I mean, I've known this cat since I was, it's literally since I got here, when I was seven years old, uh, fourth grade. Um, you know, I had him in class, went to elementary, junior high, high school. Still kicked it a little bit after high school. He kind of fell off. So, I mean, that's with everybody, right? But So, yeah, so that way you can have an idea that, you know, the cat was stealing some marijuana and, um, yeah. you know, it was i was just curious to see because like i'm not the p- type of person that likes to point fingers if you didn't call him oh damn that's a thief oh damn why do you you know or i ask him, i'll ask myself like why did he do that but it's like i don't see like i don't point him as like a thief i don't know him yet so i don't know what what was the purpose behind it so how did you handle that situation so at the heat of the moment you know i was angry i mean just like anybody else would be because i mean at the end of the day he's taking money not just from my pocket he's taking money out of my kid's mouth so that's honestly what made me the most upset because, you know, that could have been money that I could have spent on my kid. And you right? helped him out, right? You gave and him the job. I, and I like- gave him a job when he couldn't get a job. You know, like that's that's the crazy part, you know, and I've even I even had a meeting one time and I was like, guys, I've, I've had stuff missing. Like I would hope to think that my stuff is not getting stolen, that it's just getting rang out under the wrong item. And I was like you guys have a good job. I was like, I have fucking 30 resumes in my email, like people that want to work and some of them are even more qualified than, you know, Mm -hmm. so-and-so. So I was like, people are begging to work here. So I was like, if my shit's getting stolen, I was like, that's fucked up because I buy you guys lunch like almost every single day on top of you guys having an easy job and -and so-and-so. So I was like, after that, like I thought everybody was cool. Like, oh yeah. You know, like, we'll fix this. Stuff's not going to get rang out wrong. St- stuff still was coming out. Like, inventory was kind of fluctuating. Um, and finally, some customers spoke out and was like, hey, man, I seen this guy put the shit in his pocket. And 
you know in front of customers in wow in front of a customer wow. that's how comfortable he got doing it and uh i i had a suspicion of it i, I, wa- I was watching him and um you know i was just I always want to give him that benefit of the doubt because you know I you knew don't want him. to point fingers without point having fingers, 100% but, proof. I mean, yeah. I kind of I had proof. It was like 98 point some percent sure, but mm-hmm. just because that two percent, I was never like, oh yeah, fuck this guy. Um, I kind of since I'd known him, like, I, and I know he has kids. Like, I don't want to be a fucked up person and just be like, all right, cool, let's you know what, fuck this guy, I'm gonna send him back to jail. And maybe he'll learn his lesson then. But at the same time, it's like he's doing it for a reason. And if and if that reason and if he ends up going back to jail, then he's only going to come out worse because he's in the system. Right. And then like his background is going to be messed up. Do I would just rather help him because I know him and maybe help him change his life and instead of, you know, fucking his life. So that's what I'm trying to do. You know, I. Even though he stole from me, I can kind of look past it and see, all right, maybe he stole for a reason. And for whatever reason he stole, you know, like, maybe I can help him figure right. something out. Because, you so, know, I'm not going to hire him again. Right. I'm not going to give him a job. But if I can help him find another job, if I can help him fi- get out of the situation where he's getting out of this hole. Maybe he won't steal again. Right. So did you confront him? Did you I, guys- I confronted him. I called him. Uh, I gave him chances, you know, to, to make it right. And um, after kind of getting to him and talking to him a little bit, he finally, you know, decided to apologize. And um, he's rectifying, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say it, you know, he's actually fixing his mistake right now. Uh, he's working for me. Not not at, at the shop, but he's doing work at the other place, trying to, you know, redeem himself, redeem kinda. himself from what he did. And, you know, I, I can give him props for doing that. You know, like not a lot of people will do Own something, a make a mistake and then try to fix it. Yeah, that's that's hey, man, you're a good person. And man. then not a lot of people yeah. give somebody a chance. Yeah. to fix it. You, know? you could like, have been like, you know what? You already have a criminal background. You've been in this situation. <laughs> boom. Chitty bam bang. No, not like that. No, but, yeah, not like that. But um, you should have been like, you know, like you could have put him to jail or like just cut him right off the bat. So you've been pretty good to the, the you know, y- your long term friend or ex-friend. But like that's that's hopefully he learns his lesson, you know, hopefully, he, you know, yeah. gets back on track because like, you know, second chances are very rare nowadays, man. So like, yeah, that's uh, very important. Definitely. But that's good, man. That's good that you all also, you know have a little heart yes yes yeah. yes man you just gotta watch out man it's really hard i trust me if i were to own my own business it's really hard to like just yeah, make sure who's the right fit for the it snakes the right ground. right right i mean even there i mean like after that i had so many people that came out of high school that were calling me a bully and uh saying that i was weird and this and that so you kind of like when you start getting more successful as you go like you start seeing all these uh closet haters coming out you know, that will smile in your face or when you would see him, they shake your hand. But now, you know, I don't know what it is, if they're jealous or or what, or if they're just mad that they're not doing anything. But next thing you know, like I have all these people calling me a, a bully, a hater, that uh, I'm the one that's in the wrong, that I was a weirdo that I always seemed shady. I'm like, oh, well, nice to know, like, you know, nobody's going to tell this to my face, but y'all are going to go talk about this on social media. It's a very easy. And, and it's, it's, it, it's just that, man. I think it's just people that are don't have shit better to do. And they are hating on the success, bro. It's like yeah. the more successful you become, you yeah. got to make sure you prepare yourself mentally to. For all them stones that are going to get thrown. Yeah. But you know what I did with them stones? I'm building another empire. Yeah, yeah, there you go, man. That's how you got to do it because, like, Man, now social media, everybody has a voice. Everybody can talk yeah. shit. And it's you just like got to get used to it, man. information can get spread so fast. Yeah, yeah, so like that's that's another thing, man. Fake so news. If you're, you know, looking to get yourself out there as a, not as a, only a brand, but as a person that, you know, like, yeah, oh, people man. people are going to do whatever they yeah, can to bring to tear you down. It down. Yes. Just because they can't do it. That's why. Just because their life is miserable as hell and they just want to drag yeah, you with them. Yeah, they sit at home with their eight baby daddies, yep. you know, on child stamps, support and all that good jazz. Watching Mario all day. Yep, and then yep. they see somebody successful and they're like, oh, I hate this guy. Yes. Why do you hate him? I mean, it's just, it's just, 
you miserable hate them, people. You hate them because you can't get yourself out of this hole. You know, you're not motivated. You don't have a drive. You got comfortable. You're sitting here on your couch, you know, watching TV, and that's all you do every day. Why? Hey, man, they probably, they're probably they probably writing a comment right now as we speak, man. Hey. Yeah, I know. They're probably waiting for this video. Yeah, to come out, it. man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just part of it, man. I've already yeah, also. The haters. I yeah, mean, it's just part of it. I don't pay attention to it because I know I'm doing it. I'm doing good things, you know, like it takes a lot, man. It, it takes, takes a lot. lot. Like you literally go over to weed maps and look up my, my dispensary, look at all the five star reviews. Like you think I'm gonna be worried about what somebody says on, on Facebook that's not even a fucking customer? Right. Like, hell nah. That's right, that's right, man. Dude, you do a pretty good job, man. Um the other thing we we, we should talk about as well is um because now twenty nineteen is getting harder and harder and I see less people purchasing a home. So you are also a homeowner. You mm. bought a house at what uh, age and when? 20. I was 20. And you're in what age right now? Uh, 25. So I bought a house when I was 20. So um, That's yeah. a young ass age, man. That was a young age. Yeah, I was like, man, I bought, I bought a house before I could so buy So you're telling me at, at, at the age of 20, you had a A1 credit? I mean, I worked for it, you know? Yeah. Um, it's like I said, like when you you're 18 and you get out of high school there's no guidance on what what you should do or what you need to do and then everybody's either oh i want to buy this new car i want to get this credit card i want to max this out um i want to buy the new iphone i want to get the best rims for my car and even though you got like that's uh, right you got the shittiest car but you want to have the best rims for it or the best stereo system Instead of, I don't know, investing that money into something else. But, oh, I mean, man. that's just today's world. They want the newest iPhone. They want the newest beats. They want the newest shoes. Uh, but it, you go to their apartment, and they're they're laying down on the floor. That's right. Uh, I, I, I stress that a lot, man. I think that's why we, like, I kind of, like, you know, we get together along, and I, I, like, I fuck with your mentality because it's the same shit I say, man. I feel like I'd rather invest my money in equipment that I know I'm going to invest and get out of than on some fucking expensive-ass designer shoes, clothes, a or, wall, yeah. or a fucking Mercedes. Like, why? Yeah. You know what I'm why? saying? Why? Like, why? Like, all right, What's the point of it? To show off? Of, all right, you're going to buy a Michael Kors wallet and have no money in it. Right. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That's all right. All right. You're going to have uh, a, a, a Michael Kors or a Gucci purse you, and yeah. have your paycheck for one day. Have money in, 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 in that wallet for one day. Yeah. And then, like, you know, like, it just get doesn't make sense. Get the newest iPhone, and then when bill time comes, not even be able to pay for it. You That's know? why you got to utilize social media yeah. properly because social media teaches you so many things that are not the real world. So, yeah, or you'll see people on Facebook. On Facebook, fronting like, oh yeah, this, this, and that, but like literally, literally, like you go to their house and they're laying on the floor. Uh, house is all dirty, roaches everywhere. But on Facebook, you know they got the front like they're so successful and rich. Yes. Uh, funny thing, man, it's just like it's just funny because they they don't have a shame. You know them, you'd be like, oh, I, I know this guy ain't about that life, but they don't have they they still will do it like they'll post something proudly and believe that they are in that level of success yeah. that's the crazy part of it i know a couple of people that do that and I it's do like too. I, I mean you see them like you know even like their paycheck like they're just they go they, to the bank they go to facebook happy like oh <laughs> shit i got fucking like 10 20s a five and the rest of them are ones but hell yeah <laughs> you know like <laughs> don't take a picture of that like you know like for real for real you know, uh, that's that's what I'm saying. Like social media, as long as you use it the proper way, which yeah. in my example, and I'm pretty sure in your example, you use it for marketing, you use it to drive business, you use it to promote, to create content or share to create your content. content. There you go. I think that's the the right way, the right way to use it. Yep. But living a lifestyle that is not really your lifestyle is not the and way then, to go. And then, yeah, because I mean, you're you're going broke trying to impress people, and uh, yeah. that's, that's what a lot of people do, you know. Like, yeah, they, you bought this fancy ass uh, 2020 Mercedes, but you still work at fucking Hobby Lobby. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like get buy a house and then buy the expensive car. Right. Buy a house, buy a, and then buy a rent house, and then once that rent house is paid, then use the money from that rent house to pay for that car. Right. So, you know, like you're putting money into a liability that 
you know, or you lose your job, that car is gone. Right. All the money you put for that car is gone. Now you're stuck with a debt upside down. And that's not even mentioned with cars that it's not, to me, it's not even, I don't even see a car as an, invest, as, as an investment. It's more as an expense because yeah. as soon as you drive the lot, it just it's loses yeah. 20% you know, of its value. Sure. I mean, you like, know what I'm saying? It, they don't teach you what to do. And, and then That's another my, thing. When I bought my house, uh, I mean, at 18, what I did, I, I applied for a secured credit card because I knew that nowhere that i was gonna go to was gonna give me credit because first i'm a nobody on paper i'm a nobody if i go to a car dealership they're gonna be like who the fuck are you right and you know and i built that credit history all right cool i didn't get greedy on that first credit card they upped my limit to a thousand i was like oh shit on the the secure card on the secure credit card yeah so then i went to best buy i applied for a card and i bought a tv and then I just paid on that TV for a while. And then I was like, all right, cool. I need a car. So then I applied for a car. No cosigner. Nice. And that's the thing, bro. I think when I learned about a secure card is when I was like 22. Very like I had my credit was hella messed up. I did a lot of stupid stuff when I was young. I was getting all these student loans. I was getting all these credit card stuff. But nobody explained that to me. Nobody was like, bro, you better watch out because if you don't, you're going to fuck up your credit score, which your credit score means a lot. You could be hella broke, but if you have a good credit score, you still can afford some shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's even jobs that look at your credit score. Right. I seen that. Yeah. So what's the purpose of that, though? Well, the purpose of looking at your credit score is to see if you're going to steal or not. Because, I mean, not necessarily saying if you have bad credit, you know, you're going to steal, but... Typically, the people that have a lower credit score and all these collections and debts, I mean, they, they typically don't give a fuck. So. Okay, that's right. That makes sense. So, and if you see somebody with good credit, obviously, they care about their life and what they're doing. Right, or, right, right, right. So, let me give you a quick insight on when, when I figured out the credit, uh, the secure card, which is pretty much using your own money to build yeah, your credit. To so your own, yeah, Yeah, you use your own money to just pretty much pretend that it's a credit card. So when I started that, my credit score was at 520. And I had it for three years. I did not miss out on a payment. I was using it for regular stuff, such as gas or like grocery stuff. I was going to even use Whatever anyways with my own money. Whatever you were actually going to buy. Yes. And then just set the money And aside. I saw how my credit score went up, up, up. So now I'm in the 700s, like in the 740s or something like that. And it just keep going up. So we went from 520 all the way to 740, which is a big, you know, I started off paying like my, my, Devs, my collections and stuff that also helped out a lot but these are the little details that they don't teach you in school which i wish they would because this is these are the things that you actually need that's yes to get an apartment to get a car to get a house everything everything they check your credit yes anywhere that you go cell phone place uh utilities you name it. You name it. Everybody's going to check your credit. It's either a deposit or you can't get it. It's yeah. a, it's either a large deposit or you just can't get it, period. Yep. And so, and the way to get rid of those deposits is by bettering your credit. And, that is correct. And if nobody's going to give you credit, what do you do? You get a secured credit card. That is a... And how many people know that? Uh, very lot. minimum. Very minimum. Very minimum, yeah. You know. Um, so when you bought this house at the age of 20, what were your intentions? At the um, beginning? Well, I didn't want to live in an apartment. Oh, that was my my thing, you know. I didn't want to live in an apartment. Not necessarily, you know, saying that an apartment living is bad. It's just that I want to have the freedom of being able to do whatever I want to my own home. Mm-hmm. I want to have my own dogs. I don't want my landlord telling me, like, hey, you can't do this or you can do this. Uh, you got to pay a deposit for this. Right, you got to right. pay a deposit yep, yep. for that. Like, no, this is my house. I do whatever I want. If I want to go pay, paint it agree, pink, man. I'll paint it pink. Definitely agree. Um but yeah, we definitely, I've definitely been looking into a house. I not only like, that, but you build equity. Right. So every, every month that you pay rent at, for somebody, you know, that's helping them. That's not helping you. Right. Anything. That's throwing money. That's really throwing money away. And that's like, you know, I de- definitely want to, you know, look into purchasing my own home. I just feel like I need to be more established. There's, uh, there's first time buyers programs out there. Uh, a lot of cities do it. They'll like for say, I don't know, Oklahoma city. They'll throw you 10 grand, like a uh, down payment assistance. So it's honestly not that hard to get into a house. You just have to have a good credit, uh, job history, and that's it. A good job history showing that you have good income, a low debt debt to income ratio, and your good credit. And that's going to get you into a house. I mean, literally, they'll, they'll ask you to have, for say, like 10 grand in the bank. 
but out of those ten grand, you probably won't spend much of it because they'll like, give you a down payment assistance. That's that's yeah, that's awesome, man. That's really awesome, and so, I, that's what I've been working towards, just to you know get my own house, build something very nice out of that. But that's good, man. Like that's a lot of insight and a lot of knowledge that you had. Like when you, because I'm pretty sure you just didn't win blindly. Oh, let me go buy a house. You already knew where you were getting yourself into. Yeah, I knew what I was getting myself at a young into. age. At 20, yeah. I did not know shit about that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's where did you get all this knowledge and like um uh, i mean honestly i don't know uh i didn't really have much of guidance when i was small because you know my, my dad was always at work my mom lived in another country and you know in high school like or elementary and junior high like i was just a free roaming child like uh i'd either be in the creek i'd be hanging out with my friends I'd be staying the night at my friends. Like, uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know where it came from, but I was always like, I knew I'd, I didn't want to be a scrub. And you sometimes just have to work. Like, that's it. You just, if you want nice things, you have to work for you it. You got to work for it. That's right. You want to live in a house, you have to work for the house. And you, you, if you want to drive a fucking car that's nice, you got to work for that car. That's right. If you if you want a cell phone, you got to pay for the cell phone. Like the other things that you want and need or whatever, you have to work for it. Right. So right now you really I rarely see you vacationing, like going on I vacations and stuff. Uh, I see you all the time working, working, working. working. And, yeah, and if you are yeah. somewhere out of town, it's because you're doing a business. I'm working, you're yeah, on a business like trip, I, you know. I work all the time. I work from the moment I wake up to the moment I wake up the next day. And it's because you enjoy it. I enjoy it. I enjoy That's, work. There's not a lot of places that you can say, oh, man, I, I love or I enjoy going to work. Like, even my employees will tell me, like, man, I couldn't think of saying, man, I love, I, like, I haven't thought or went to a job that I've, like, dreaded, you know, like, thinking, like, oh, man, fuck work tomorrow. Like, right. I don't want to go. How many times did you do that? A lot, bro. I was a like, lot. fuck. Yeah, I mean, there's even Every times fucking that day. I was sick just because I didn't want to go to work. Yeah, so I was like, man, right, I don't, right. don't want to deal with the bullshit. And, that's that's right. You know, like here, like, all right, you got all these people that are, you know, excited. The marijuana is legal. Like, who is really going to complain? You know, like everybody that walks in through that door is usually happy. And yes. I love I love that because usually if they're happy, they leave happier. Yeah, man. I've seen a lot of... Uh, a lot of happy customers. You got customers getting the 405 Buds logo tatted. Yeah, and some like, dude got a tattoo. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Yeah. That's I think that has to be satisfying. Like I, I when you saw that, yeah, it like, was like, like what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's somebody it. permanently marked their body. Yes, yeah, like, like, yeah, like that's shit. the impact you're leaving in customers. So that's that's a good yeah. thing. I was like, what? Yeah, okay, no, okay. like yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, it's like man. a you know one of a, one of a kind feeling. Like you know somebody's tattooing your brand because they loved it so they much. love yes yeah they just yeah it's that's crazy yeah that's that's good man like that's i don't good. even have four or five buds tattooed yeah right maybe i should for real bro I, i'm <laughs> surprised bro because like hey it's, it's a clean logo man it's a clean yeah, logo i know i cried when i seen it so like i gotta give props to the guy but uh what what is your mission uh as far as you know the 405 buds what do you what what's the next level you're trying to take it to the, the next mission, so right now we got the store that's just a dispensary only. So right now the next goal is start on the grow, which that's what I want to be the big part of, you know, and leave Sarah working the store is I want to be a big part of the grow because I, I, love, I love the plant. I, I love growing it. I've, I've grown my own personal plants, and it's, it's just – something that's just so enjoyable because you look at it every day and the plant changes every single day you seem like a guy of nature bud so uh, i i love like the time that I, I spend with the plants i love training them i love watching them like do different things trying different things and i think it's just going to be awesome being able to take something from uh beginning product all the way to end and then being able to sell it in the shelves. So because I know that I grew it. Or, right, right. You know. So when I go next time and pay you a visit, you're gonna have all kinds of like. I mean, not yet. It'll probably take about four months to. Hey, before, four months is around the corner. Before the man. first, you know, product maybe hits the shelves from the actual four or fives, yeah. you yeah. know, the factory. But uh, the the so the a future. year from now, you're saying like I walk into the to the grow and we have all kinds of different like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna have gonna be like uh, a, different veg vegging rooms and different yeah. flowering rooms. Um, keep a clone room and a genetics room. 
So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it going. And then uh, we're doing the processing, too. So we're going to have a kitchen. Um, we're going to make the vape carts. Um, I mean, okay, pretty much okay. every single product that you see out there from you're gonna, it's gonna flour, be from there, from flour, the- pre rolls, uh, edibles, you know, brownies, gummies, suckers, cakes, uh, vape cartridges, all of it. We're gonna make it in house. Wow, and that that also would save you a lot of money too. Saves like, a lot of money too. I you mean, also I gotta know, pay somebody to bring you the you know yeah, the weed, yeah. right? And then I mean, if you grow it, then you know like what what's in it, and if it's quality then obviously you're gonna be proud about putting it out there because i mean right now you can buy something but you don't honestly you don't know. know what it nah, is somebody right. can come in and tell you hey this is sour diesel and it wasn't even sour diesel and so right right that's, that's the thing i mean if this is really medical you really have to give the, the customer what it actually is gotcha gotcha so okay i see so that i like that vision man i really like that i think it's gonna plans. cut yeah. it's gonna cut a lot of expenses man yeah once that downtown location is open uh, I know for sure we're looking to do five more stores. So. Five more? Okay. I see you, man. I see the vision, man. You already got everything planned out. When I seen that, I was like, a- another store? Okay. Another st- in three months. Like, you know, like that's that's how much drive, you know, we got. Like, okay. So. A lot of people are complacent. They they started a store. They, and they thought it was going to be easy. And, you know, a lot of them are shutting down. Uh a lot of them can't even stay open because they can't find any product. And the thing with me is I, every week I go to a farm and I find I find a new supplier. Uh, I contact new people. I contact new vendors. A lot of people just wait for people to come to the store. I'm actually out there trying to find the driving, best deal. putting in the miles, talking to people, sending messages like. That's you got to be on it. Bro. You got to like, be that's, on that's it. Right. Yeah, that's right. I've had a few shops come to my store and like, hey. Where are you finding your flower? Because we can't find anything. I'm like, dude, like, I don't wait for somebody to show up to the store. I drive out to right. their farm and, you know. Kind of like, check it out yourself. And go check it out myself. Like, Okay, okay. There's, is, there's the ones that wait and there's the ones that, you know. There's the ones that, it. yeah, that get eaten or there's the ones that hunt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And eat. So you're one of those, man. That's good. So. Where would you see yourself in five years, man? You got a lot going on right now. Five years, bud. Hopefully in five years, you know, I can just sit back at home and enjoy time with my kiddo, you know. Okay. My kiddo and the wifey and, you know. There might be a second one. There might be a second or a third out there by (laughs) By that time, hopefully, you know. It'd be nice. Okay. Uh, But in five years, man, honestly, I want to retire my parents. You know, that'd be the goal is have them retired in five years. So... The way I'm seeing your five years is pretty much you want to already establish something where you don't even have to be that much involved. Your businesses are running. Yeah. Everything is good. Everything is booming. Pretty I mean, much. unless, you know, I go to another state and do this again. And start it. Yeah, which, start. Which it's in the talk. You know, we might want we, we Sarah's from Chicago. And she's got family in Chicago. So marijuana just legalized uh, there. recreational in Chicago. So we're thinking of actually making a move down there and, you kind know, of trying out a new market. Yeah, because I mean, there's 50 states and they're not all legal. So new markets are going to end up opening up right. around the United States. And so if you end up like, let's say, doing that, then you would have dispensaries here and then dispensaries over in there. Other states. Yeah, it'd be so nice. We, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So you, you're trying to be worldwide. Trying to be worldwide. 405 buds worldwide. OK. Yeah. We're going to bring area code buds to you soon <laughs> oh me oh, in that case it would be the okay okay yeah. i like that I like that would yeah. be the chicago area code um so we are 48 minutes in uh, is there anything you want to add any questions or man you know i just want to add that um everybody just needs to love each other you know i like uh, that vibe we got to stop ha- stop the hate uh Free the immigrant children at the border for sure yes you know like all right y'all want to free asap rocky like yeah, free them too. Free everybody that's got a weed charge, you know? like it. That's the dumbest thing, Talking, speaking of that. Like, I think they should lower and, like, you know, stop with them dumbass laws of, like, oh, if you get caught with weed, you're going to do so much in prison. Yeah, it's like, or, if, like, that's like dumb. rapists get less time than people that go in for weed charges, you know? Like, yes, it's crazy. yes, yes, yes. And I think one thing I forgot to even ask you, and I didn't remember if I asked you this, but... Speaking of like the weed and all that good jazz, what's the most you have smoked in the a day? The most I've smoked in a day, man, fuck. Because I know you love that, all man. Right, you look, love it. 
I wake up, I smoke, I I get. I get uh get my lunch break and I smoke. I mean, any time that I get any free time, I smoke. So, and, and, and you feel like that, you function I, better with. I eat edibles too, so I stay on my edibles because. So mean, you feel like you function a lot I better. Function. I mean, I, I can function whichever way I need to, but uh, it just helps. You know, I, I've been I was in a couple car wrecks and you know from sports, my back's fucked up. So it just helps. I mean, your you know, body like, relaxed. I'd rather smoke than go out there and buy a bottle and get plastered drunk. You know? Oh, God. Tell me about it. Like, I just, I don't smoke like I used to, but I rather prefer to smoke than just drink alcohol. I think just Yeah, alcohol. I mean, like, all right, so you smoke and you're just going to go to bed or go night night. Or and you'll feel good go when you wake up. That's the eat. thing. But yeah, when you get drunk, like, man, you feel like you're poisoning your body. You're dehydrated. You have a headache. You don't feel like eating anything because your stomach is shut. Like, that's, I've gotten so many hangovers where it's like, at this point, fuck this shit. Like, yeah, I just, I'm just fucking up my yeah, body, that's honestly. That's why I don't like go now. Because, you know, you get influenced into drinking. Everybody's like, ah, oh, shot, shot, shot. Like, that's nah, right. No, 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 no. Puff, puff, puff. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that's another thing, man. Like, you really don't travel on vacation a lot. Mm, you also no. don't go out a lot. I do you no. never, you don't feel the urge of it? You just I like, don't. I, 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 focus I, laser focus I, what, what what am i celebrating like you know what am i going out for and celebrating i ain't got nothing to celebrate at that about. point you're just trying to be at, like the other yeah, like these other trying, people you're just trying to be like everybody everybody likes they look forward to the weekend everybody looks forward looking to the weekend get drunk and then come monday like where's your where's your goal they're what miserable are, and they're miserable i hate what, monday what are you celebrating so, here's the thing am i the only one that likes monday I love I love every day honestly like sometimes I don't even know what day it is like I'm I just I'm like honestly oh, shit. if I if you ask me I'm more excited for Monday to come through because I feel like that's when everybody's just working and everything is calm so it makes it, it makes perfect sense for me to like work and like be in that work yeah. mindset even more because like the weekends are just feel like everybody and the weekends feel more like a relaxed yeah. chill like okay let's go and like have fun and shit but i'm always like is their focus yeah, well, what but fun? i look forward to the mondays mm -hmm. i look yeah. forward to the mondays look, just because i look forward to the monies the mon the money too yeah. yeah every day that ends in y that's my favorite day <laughs> i'm dead <laughs> <laughs> but yeah man i think uh so going back to the question because i didn't even think we answered it fully what was the most that you smoked oh shit man Let's say like I've, an, I've never it, has it been more than an ounce a day? I've never kept like, track of it, but I mean I'm pretty sure I smoke an ounce, an ounce maybe. I don't know. No, I wouldn't day? say daily, but well, uh, in a day like about, it's been, yeah, maybe an ounce, yeah, for that whole day. Yeah. That's a lot, huh? Y'all <laughs> like, know them king palms? Y'all ever smoke king palms? Like, I have not. They hold like two grams, so they're like cigars. So I, I think I went through a whole pack of those. So yeah, about an ounce. Yeah, so usually I smoke about two grams per session. Golly. So it, ha has it ever gotten to the point where you're like, fuck, I feel like I'm an overdose, even though you can't overdose on marijuana, but like, or you feel like, oh, fuck, I'm like so you're freaking fucking... out. Uh, yeah. It depends, you know. Or when was that moment that you got that like, oh, fuck? Uh, it just depends, you know, if, if I'm just sitting down and then like I smoke a sativa and like, fuck, but if I'm, I smoke a sativa and I'm moving around, then I'll be straight. Uh, but sometimes, man, when I smoke them heavy indicas, like I'm just like. <sighs> so like, uh, like the dabs are those strong? The dabs are pretty strong. Um, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for a first timer, uh, just because like, you, all right. So Johnny, Johnny, uh, I let him try a dab for his first time, and next thing you know, I get a phone call an hour and a half later, and he's like, "Hey, bro." Uh, I'm still here at Walmart in the parking lot, and he's like, "I feel like I can't move." <laughs> oh, <laughs> you want to know why i laughed so hard at that one because i had a buddy that had that same effect same effect he <laughs> yeah so i mean dabs aren't yeah did you have to go rescue him no nah, he said he finally you know went inside and got his groceries but he said he just lost his train of thought for that whole hour so i had one buddy of mine and he know who he is my grandpa had a blunt and this was like when I was used to, used to hit it hard. So I was like, bro, come over. And then we found this blunt in the ashtray and was like, let's smoke this shit. This is my grandpa's. So we went ahead and hit it. I was normal, but my buddy, it, 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 it took him on a whole different level. Like he got to the point where he's like this, I can't move and just fail. Like he just said, he's like, bro, I can't move. What's, what, what's going on? I was like, what the fuck? Like, have you ever even gotten that effect? Mm -hmm. but to me, I was where, like, where you fall? No. He, no. he was like that. Right? Like. I can't move. Like, what's going on? I was like, 
what the hell like yeah i, I guess it's like it hits everybody that's, different that's pretty bad too you know i don't i don't like giving people a bad experience right on, on weed you know never because and then they're like to me it was funny fuck that like for real it's for bad real. so i mean always you know first time like i don't i don't give them a dab or i don't give them a straight sativa It'll be either hybrid or some something some like on the indica side cause yeah you don't want to freak somebody out all right man so it's like when you drink your first shot you know like eh. right oh yeah Ugh, man my first hangover was the wine it was this weird red wine Ugh, i don't want nothing to do with it but to close this podcast um what advice would you give me if i want to start like i said i, I want to start my own business i want to i have z- jack shit on my um, in my bank account you have jack shit in let's say account. i have right. maybe Two grand at the most. Two grand? Hey, but that's a lot. You could do a lot with that, actually. So where would I start? Uh, Well, first, you know, if you actually want to do things to legit, you go online, you file for a fucking tax ID number, you know, then you go to the state and then you pay, you know, your uh, certificate of good standing. It's like a hundred bucks or so. Now you're a legit business now, you know, you're an LLC. So that'd be the first thing, you know, like if you really want to register and be legit, it'll take you about a hundred, 200 bucks. You don't, I mean, you don't have to, you can do a sole prop, which mm-hmm. doesn't take anything, but still, if that's what you want to do. Boom. Now you got an official company with a name, right? But I mean, with two grand, honestly, you could do a lot with two grand. So let's just say you don't have anything at all. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, but you still have your equipment. What you're going to do at that point is you're going to create content. The more content that you can create, the more traffic, the more, traffic, the more people that are going to see it. If you sit here and don't create any content, it's like for your channel, right? Right. If you only threw one video out there and then just stopped and you still kept talking about it, you know, like nobody's going to want to look at, at that same video the whole time. That's right. You got to create more videos. You got to create uh, inter- <laughs> in- interacting stuff. You got to keep bringing in interesting people. I mean, it might not make you money right now, but eventually, you know, after creating so much content. You know, you're going to get all those views. You're going to get that following. And that's all it is. It's just if if you really want to do something, then then work for it. Keep working at it. Do something every day to make, you know, make sure that's going to happen. So, like, right now, you're making a video, right? And that, this is what you want to do. So, you're doing something, right? Is this going to make you money? Well, at the moment, it's not. It's not, but you're still doing it. Right. Because you love it. Right. You love it, right? So, mm-hmm. you wouldn't love doing this and making money. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's the goal. And, and this right here, what you're doing right now is something towards that. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's right, man. I like that. I like that advice, man. See, that of the tax and, and you know, I, we don't know. A lot of us don't know about it. You know, we have to find out the hard way. So <clears throat> yeah, that's just, a major plus. Uh, good, just, just valuable content, information. Putting yourself out there. If you don't put yourself out there, if you don't put your product out there, then... How are people going to know about you or how are people going to know about you or how are people going to know about your product? Yes, yes, yes. So, man, I I, I loved it, man. I love all make this advice. Make you make it. So, yeah, I mean, one thing I would say, bro, like, because I, I, you guys get a lot of customers. So, like, even, like, you know, post some more videos, I think, just to yeah, customer yeah. talking, I think had, that would be good. people like, hey, who runs your Instagram? I'm like, me. <laughs> hey, yeah. you got to, bro. I yeah. mean, I like that. I like that. Like, how do you do that? I'm like, man, just go on there and mess with it. Like, right, right. You got to. It's a, and it's, a, it's an important thing. And that's something I see that you guys stay active on is on the Instagram. You guys are posting you daily. Post every day. I mean, yes. like any, anybody any has new a products that come out in. there or anybody that's offering some sort of product, talk about it every day. It's very important. Also, a lot of, a lot of businesses. Yeah, yeah. Don't see also the advertising. Adver- if you don't have money to advertise, advertise as you are your ha- own advertiser. Yeah, man. however talk, you can. Yeah. Period. If but you businesses. see a stranger on the street, talk to him like, "Hey, my name is Darwin, and, and I, I do own videos. this. I own that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Like, yep. what do you do? Network, networking. So it's just about networking, meeting new people, uh, getting new friends. You know, getting new spots. Like, I'm sure if you go for say to a club one day and take your camera and just start taking pictures for free. Next thing you know, like you post them, you tag the club, they call you like, "Hey, we love the pictures you took." Like, that's right. Come do it every week. You're your own advertiser. Like you're your own ad, pretty much. You put out as much as you want. You can go yeah, as far as you want. Yeah, wear your stuff everywhere you go. You know, like hey, hey, I'm, I'm liking them wearing, shirts, man. Yeah, like, I'm liking them shirts. So um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, close this podcast out, man. 
definitely check out 405 Buds if you're in Oklahoma City, Midwest City. That's where to go. The downtown location will be out pretty soon. Anything you want to tell them? Uh, two, three months. We should be open over there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah doing big things. Okay. Know? Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to tell them, bro? If you need your medical card, let me know. I can help you find it, figure out a way to do it. Um, everybody that shares this video uh, will get entered to win a free medical card. And okay. um, we'll announce that, you know, after all the shares. But I'll pay for the medical card for okay. all the people that share. We'll, pay, we'll, we'll find a winner. Okay, look out for that, man. So, Juan, once again, thank you for coming and to the Half Court Podcast. Y'all already stay tuned for that giveaway because that's a that's a major plus, man. That's a major that's plus. A so stay tuned yeah. for that. Um, this episode would be out pretty soon. Uh, your feedback is very important. So comment what you guys think down below. Your boy D to the win is out. Juan, tell him. Boom. We out. <laughs>